Today's conversation is on reality being rigged in your favor. As to think otherwise would be identification with illusions. Apparently, this is what they don't want you to know, which we can say is also an illusion, as nothing is held back from you. This is what I would like to discuss with you today from personal experience. To do so, I titled today's conversation mind map, I only appear to witness that I am bliss. Part of acceptance of truth, as truth is all that is real. Thus, everything that is not truth are illusions, unreal illusions, generated by identification to untrue beliefs. Part of the acceptance of truth, and in relation to what I just mentioned, is the recognition that you exist beyond the illusions of evil. Today we discuss Lesson 4 in Lessons in Truth by H. Emily Cady as a result of my personal experience of applying this particular chapter. She says, we have further learned that God is the total of all good in the universe and that there is in the mind which is God a perpetual desire to pour more of God, the substance of all good things, through us into visibility or into our lives. In these lessons, and I'll link in the description to Lesson 1, 2, and 3, which we discussed. She says that we have seen that besides the real innermost self of each of us, the self that is the divine self, because it is an expression or pressing out of God, or we could say in relation to our Neville Goddard conversations, pushing out of God, into visibility, and is always one with the Father. There is a human self, a carnal mind, which reports lies from the external world and is not to be relied upon fully. That is the self of which Jesus spoke when he said, Let him deny himself. So, as she mentioned, the carnal mind reports lies from the external world to bring awareness to these untrue beliefs so that they may be released, not to shame and condemn. The individual can only shame and condemn themselves. Truth is God is beyond shame and condemnation, and I and the Father are one as it I and I am are one. And if God is love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, unconditionally, then you are also unconditional love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, prosperity. And these conditions that the individual form by relating to the outer appearances of life, not from the premise of truth, are revelations of what has been identified with and can be released. Knowing that I am certainly love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, prosperity. And upon releasing identification to the untrue beliefs that generate the illusions or the appearances from these untrue beliefs. Truth is revealed in, on, and as the outer appearances of life, which represent love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, prosperity, 
I shared a practical example of this in Tuesday's video in relation to the entrepreneurial journey. If you're interested in that discussion, I'll link in the description to it. And the individual does not need to be concerned of how it happens, rather can remain as the unconditional silent observer to witness life appearances through the eye of God. Unconditional love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, prosperity to be in harmonious relationship with the outer appearances of life. This purifies the mind from the untrue beliefs that generate the illusions of separation. And so the individual being unconditional to appearances, thus not allowing themselves to be conditioned by untrue interpretations of appearances. Living from the premise of love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, prosperity is not concerned about how it appears or by human theories of how it works as the ways of God transcend human reasoning. We walk by faith by being the silent witness of truth. There's only God. She says, In our ignorance of the nature of God and of our relationship to God, we have believed that all our enjoyment came from external sources, usually from gaining possession of something we did not have. This is an interesting point. Let's explore this further. What appears as external enjoyment is actually a manifestation of internal enjoyment. What I mean by that is true nature is love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. There's nothing wrong with the individual desiring to experience love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, prosperity. It is an illusion to believe that it is experienced from external sources. These illusions generate the neediness and chasing of external sources, which is an illusion. As the individual realizes their true nature is void of separation and thus simply is love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, prosperity. They automatically appear to engage with appearances from the premise of truth. And they realize that they're experiencing enjoyment with what appears as external sources. Thus, they're not external sources. They're appearances. Joy is witnessed as expressions of bliss, appearances of bliss. Why this is key is, for example, when it comes to relationships. What I realized on my journey of cultivating relationships, personal relationships, friendships, business relationships, I only be still to realize what I truly look for. It's the recognition that God is the source of joy. So we could say then, as a result, nothing is more important to me than the joy of God, the love of God, the peace of God, the happiness of God, the fulfillment of God, the prosperity of God. Why? Because then it appears as the individual not seeking this in and as the relationship appearances. For example, let's say you meet someone, you're interested in them, they give you their phone number, you call them up, they don't appear to return your calls. 
let's say the individual then starts to experience separation from fulfillment. They say, I am not fulfilled because they're not calling me, which is an untrue belief. As I am fulfilled unconditionally, they acknowledge that in the moment. They acknowledge that I am fulfilled by being still. And they release the identification to the untrue beliefs by allowing the emotions to release, feeling them being released without shaming or condemning themselves, knowing that part of that release is the release of the identification to the untrue. They also not allow the thoughts that arise in mind that seem to suggest that they are not fulfilled, which arise from the untrue beliefs. They, you could say, deny the evidence of the senses, which by that I mean very specifically is what the individual relates to what appears through the senses. In other words, if the person didn't call them, then they say, I am not fulfilled, which again is untrue because I am fulfilled. True nature is fulfillment. So they release the thoughts, they release the emotions, and they are free. Or more specifically, they realize that they were always free in that regard. So what's interesting after that is they remain fulfilled. If the person answers the phone, I am fulfilled. If the person does not answer the phone, I am fulfilled. Why is this harmonious when it comes to relationships? Well, because then the individual does not play out theater from the untrue beliefs. For example, if they are identified with that untrue belief, they may start acting in a way which we can say as approval-seeking, validation-seeking, maybe starting to try to manipulate that person, which generates inharmonious appearances. Again, further perpetuating these illusions as a result of the identification to these untrue beliefs, from which they swear that that is the way they are. When in actuality, that is the way they think they appear. Truly, created in the perfect image of the Creator. They are love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. It was said very precisely by Adi Shankara. Shankara Sharya said amazing things. I recommend studying his work. He said, Knowing that I am different from the body, I need not neglect the body. So, like she had mentioned earlier, the carnal mind brings awareness to what I have been identified with. So I don't neglect the body. I understand what the appearances are revealing. I understand what the emotions are revealing. He says, it is a vehicle that I use to transact with the world. It is the temple which houses the pure self within. Pure self within. Pure bliss. Pure happiness. Pure love. Pure fulfillment. Pure peace. Now she says, Your real self is never sick, never afraid, never selfish. It is the part of you that seeketh not her own is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. 1 Corinthians 13.5 I like how she said that, thinketh no evil. So she speaks of denying the evidence of the senses that suggests that God created evil to appear in the individual's life shaming and condemning them, which are illusions that exist only in the individual mind. 
the senses reveal these identifications. Again, not to shame and condemn the individual, but so that the individual can deny the evidence of the senses. To be as I am, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, prosperity. As we discuss also in our Neville Goddard conversation, denying what appears as the evidence of the senses. And very specifically, it's what the individual considers to be evidence of the senses implying that they're not love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, prosperity, which are illusions that exist only in the individual mind. And why do we release these identifications? Because as mentioned, as we release these identifications, the appearances of love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, prosperity, appear in, on, and as the outer appearances of life. Wonderful harmonious relationships, wonderful entrepreneurial success, and also, as we discussed in Tuesday's video, a wonderful blissful bridge of incidents to manifesting that entrepreneurial vision. I'll link in the description to that video. So let's go into deeper what she means by deny. She says, the word deny has two definitions. According to Webster, to deny in one sense is to withhold from, as to deny bread to the hungry. To deny in another sense, and we believe it was in this latter way that Jesus used it, is to declare to be not true, to repudiate as utterly false, to deny oneself, then, is to not withhold comfort or happiness from the external self, much less to inflict torture upon self, but is to deny the claims of error consciousness, to declare these claims to be untrue. As she says here, we may have believed that God was angry with us, and that we were sinners who ought to be afraid of God. All this is false, entirely false. And the first step toward freeing ourselves from the troubles is to get rid of our erroneous beliefs about God and about ourselves. So let's discuss this. I titled this section, I Witness God Everywhere in relation to the title of the mind map, I only appear to witness that I am bliss. True nature is bliss. What do I appear to witness bliss from? The sense of I, which appears to have a body to transact with the world. As Adi Shankara had said, again, knowing that I am different from the body I need not neglect the body. Again, I am bliss, Satchit Ananda, truth, consciousness, bliss. He said, it is a vehicle that I use. I use it. The individual self. I and the Father are one. I and I am are one. It is a vehicle that I use to transact with the world. It is the temple which houses the pure self within your true nature is love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. God is love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. Any other belief when it comes to God that is not from the premise of truth is an untrue belief which generates illusions, appearances of illusions. And so, no shame in condemnation. We practice this. I witness God everywhere. She says, there is but one power in the universe, and that is God. God is good, and God is omnipresent. Apparent evils are not entities or things of themselves. They are simply apparent absence of the good, just as darkness is an absence of light. But God, or good, is omnipresent, so the apparent absence of good Evil is unreal. So that's the distinction. What is real is God. There's only God. That's what I mean. I witness God everywhere. What is considered unreal 
is the untrue beliefs. So, every individual seeks to relax into knowing that I am love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, prosperity. So that the individual can witness true nature, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, prosperity, in, on, and as the outer appearances of life. More so each moment, in increasing frequency on a continuous basis. And we do this by releasing the untrue identifications. Before we get into an example that she shares, let's talk about I, knowing that I and I am are one. She says, what everyone desires is to have only the good manifested in their life and surroundings, to have their life full of love, to have perfect health, to know all things, to have great power and much joy, and this is exactly what God wants us to have. All love is God in manifestation. As we have learned in a previous lesson, again, I'll link in the description to our previous discussions. She says, all wisdom is God, all life and health are God. All joy, because all good, and all power are God. All good of whatever kind is God come forth into visibility through people or some other visible form. So what is the result of applying this in my life personally over the years since I discovered this information in 2004 through Thinking Grow Rich? An increasing frequency on a continuous basis of harmonious relationships, harmonious life experiences, family relationships, business dealings, wonderful environments, discovery of and enjoyment of hobbies, activities that are my individualized expressions of love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, prosperity. Thus, I experience love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, prosperity with these appearances not because of these appearances. In the earlier stages, I seek to experience it through the illusion of because of these appearances. There's only one cause. I am. Exodus 3.14, And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. There's only God. Only God appearing. Only God appearing to animate all that appears. Through, as Adi Shankara had said, the body, which I don't neglect. It's a vehicle that I use to transact with the world. The body reveals what I have been identified with. Through my relationship with the appearances, people, environment, circumstance, information. It is the temple which houses the pure self within. Pure self. And by purifying the subconscious mind from the untrue beliefs, I appear to witness bliss wherever I am, true nature, in, on, and as the outer appearances of life. She says, When we crave more of any good thing, we are in reality craving more of God to come forth into our lives so that we can realize it by our senses. So, seek ye first the kingdom within, and all these things shall be added unto you. She says, having more of God does not take out of our lives the good things. It only puts more of them in. In the mind that is God, there is always the desire to give more, for the divine plan is forever to get more good into visibility. So the I receives within love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, prosperity as visions, as desires from the heart. This is a harmonious relationship between I and I am, between the individual and God, knowing that God is good. And if the individual is identified with untrue beliefs, which, as she said, is the apparent absence of good, evil, 
we know that it is unreal. We release these identifications. So let's look at the example that she shares of how we can do it very practically and precisely. She says, if someone shows you ill will, again, appearances, no shame and condemnation. She says, silently deny their power to hurt you or to make you unhappy because it's an illusion. Only you choose what the power appears as. Choose love. Choose happiness. Choose peace. Choose bliss. Choose fulfillment. Choose prosperity, your true nature. By being still, capturing the feeling of love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, prosperity. Knowing that I am beyond appearances. She said, should you find yourself feeling jealous or envious toward anyone, instantly turn the heel of denial on the hydra-headed monsters. So, instantly turn the heel of Denial means not force, but rather acceptance of the end. True nature, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. By, as she says here, declaring that you are an expression of perfect love. An expression which God is pressed out into visibility. I like that. An expression which is God pressed out into visibility. There is really no reason for jealousy or envy. Because it's untrue. It's unreal. For all persons are one and the same spirit. And there are diversities of operations or manifestations. But it is the same God which worketh all in all. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You can say, I realize that I appear to witness unconditionally true nature as I relax into knowing that I am by being still, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, prosperity. As I remain as I am in harmonious relationship with God, I witness God appearing more so each moment in increasing frequency on a continuous basis in, on, and as the outer appearances of life. Symbols of good, symbols of love, happiness, peace, bliss, prosperity, fulfillment. As I remain the unconditional, pure observer of appearances, I witness through pure consciousness the outer appearances of life appear to rearrange to reflect the truth that I am bliss, Satchit Ananda. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.